This is the Chiefs official podcast network. Take advantage of the day. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Good playmakers on three. One, two, three. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. Hello, everybody in the Chiefs kingdom. Hope you're all doing better, staying safe, doing well. Mitch Holtis with you, voice of the Chiefs, along with the man we call the shop, Barber Shop. Uh, Sean Barberton here, National Football League veteran, and this is Defending the Kingdom. We appreciate all of you in checking in with us every week. We try to give you some things to think about, maybe go beyond the obvious, and we're going to do that again this week as we jump into the world of Tyreek Hill, the cheetah. Many think the best wide receiver in the National Football League, unarguably, the uh, most explosive player in the National Football League. Before we do this, I got to give you an act of kindness. Long before we were in uh, COVID protocol, Sean Barber gave me this. Sha, I don't know if you remember this. You put this in a nice little decorative <laughs> sack, and it is a warm vanilla sugar antibacterial hand gel. I'm just telling you, <laughs> that is an act of kindness, and I appreciate it. Hey man, uh, right before the, the 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 whole COVID thing and everybody was quarantined, uh, I went out and bought about a hundred of those at the local uh, Bath and Body Works uh, right there at Oak, Oak Park Mall. And me and my wife just thought it was a great idea to uh, for our friends and family, coworkers. Man, put about three or four of them together, make a little gift package. Say, hey, I, I know you're going to be needing to keep your hands nice and and uh, uh, germ free for the next few weeks, man. So uh, whatever you can do, um, I always know that. Uh, when we talk about leadership, we talk about acts of kindness, you got to be willing to serve others. And so to a degree of service is where you're, um, it, it kind of shows where your heart lies. Just want to let you know, I appreciate it. Terrific uh, um, act of kindness from the heart from you and your uh, wife. All right, now we're going to jump into the cheetah. What's next for this guy? Let's just look at some of the numbers here. Last year, let's do not forget, he missed 23 quarters in the regular mm-hmm. season. 23 quarters. And still, 89 targets, 58 catches, uh, and Gaba Yards, pro football focus rating, had him at 85 uh, a year ago, 129 targets, mostly healthy, 87 receptions. Again, at Gaba Yards and touchdowns, his rating 89.6. But we're looking at it, and let me just throw in the postseason here because this is phenomenal. He had 16 targets in Super Bowl 54, 16 targets with nine catches for 105 yards and the most famous, second most famous, or tied for the most famous play in the 60-year history of this franchise, 65 TPT, is now side-by-side with the Wasp. That is the cheetah. Now, let's check these boxes. I put it out on Twitter earlier. Is he the fastest in the league? Check. Can he jump? He's a crazy vertical. Watch the Texans game. Uh, Regular season. Three, hands. Ability to catch, high point it. Check. Uh, Strength. Check. He looks like a Division One wrestler. Now what's next for the Cheetah shop, in your opinion? Man, the evolution of the Cheetah is something that's always been um, – he's, he's chartering into uncharted territory for a wide receiver. Um, when I think about comping him as far as where can I compare Tyreek Hill to former wide receivers, there, there isn't any. Um, you have to combine like a Reggie Bush, a Torrey Holt, a Steve Smith, and like a Joey Galloway. You know, the, the speed from Galloway, the playmaking ability of Reggie Bush, the tenacity and toughness of Steve Smith, and then the route running as a polished receiver of a Torrey Holt. Um, if you take all of their qualities and me- mesh them together, you get this special athlete that we use, that we call the cheetah here in the kingdom. And, and he's developing more and more every year. Starting is as a, a return specialist, kind of a gadget play guy. Um, you go back to the 2018 film, he was actually our number three wide receiver. A couple of out routes, he was kind of body catching, and they made comments about his hands being uh, um, something he needed to prove on. And he went to work. He went to work in a big way that offseason, working the jugs and seeing working on his hands. And now he's one of the the low drop guys in the league. He's a guy who has some of the most surest, strongest hands you've seen. Um, He has that confidence and trust in his hands where he can run any route on the field, high point it because you, 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 uh, you talked about athleticism, high point the ball, and he is tremendous at um, um, catches that are being competed for. Um, and he does a great job of, uh, of turning small completions into touchdown big plays. Yeah, so this Defending the Kingdom episode is a cheetah what next. To me, I think he's going to another level. I think we agree about that. 
But how he's doing it is what's most interesting to me. So postseason, uh, Tyreek Hill, most targets, most receptions, most touchdowns of anybody in the postseason. He had the extra game, but he's also compared to those other San Francisco receivers. I'm going to talk about route running. Then I had a chance to talk with the the Cheetah uh, a few days back, but he dives into some of this stuff. But to me, and for two years, Shop, I've talked about this. He and I have had some great conversations one-on-one outside of the public realm about his attention to detail and route running. Now, you've been around this league a long time. There have been a lot of real fast guys that don't become great because they don't know how to run routes, or a lot of route runners that don't become great because they're not fast enough. Now, or they become like possession guy. Now, all of a sudden, Tyreek Hill can do both. But to me, his route running has been impeccable. The Wasp. The Wasp. Go back and watch him run the Wasp. It is an unbelievable route, and he's almost becoming uncoverable on back shoulder throws because of how much attention he's given to that part of his game. Yeah, with, with, the, with the vertical push he can put on any DB, you have to give him so much cushion that any stop route under 10 yards is almost just like a a, a, a pitch and catch. It's going to be a seven-on-seven seven type. There's no stopping uh, Tyreek Hill if it's a one-on-one matchup if he's running a vertical route and decides to stop. He can, he can accelerate faster than any DB, and then he knows when he wants to stop. As long as him and Pat are on the same page, it's a completion, it's a first down. But when you talk about the complexity of the Wasp being able to do a middle push vertical for about 20 or 30 yards, bend it to manipulate the safety, and then make a 90-degree cut to the sideline, that play, a middle-depth out route after a vertical push, first of all, most receivers aren't fast enough to complete that route with the time necessary for a quarterback to deliver the ball. Most quarterbacks on the team don't have a strong enough arm to be able to deliver it where it needs to be from the pocket. And so when you have a mixture of Pat Mahomes and his talent, then the vertical speed and route running and precise running of routes of a cheetah, that route against any zone coverage becomes almost uncomfortable unless you want to take a defender and just say, I'm going to guess it's the wasp and I'm just going to be line. I'm just going to buzz 25 yards, take an extra defender, avoid a zone just to take that one play away. It's it's un, unguardable. Yeah, and there's uh, very few defenders will do that, one. And there's so much other stuff to worry about in this offense. We covered that last week with Kelsey. But this route running, you know, I've, I've loved to go watch guys like Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne when they were together with Peyton Manning uh, with the Colts. Antonio Brown, I know, is not a popular player right now, but when he's in his when he was in his prime with the Steelers, I mean, he was running routes like a champion. So precise, in a science, uncoverable in many instances. And now, like you said, if I, I know stop, I got to give him the stop route. You want eight, nine, ten? I'm gonna give it to you because I don't need you killing me on some double move. And then I'm gonna try to muscle you. But that's where the strength comes into play. The second part of where the cheetah goes from here is where he gets into depth in this conversation I had with him, and we'll talk about it after we uh, we hear from the Cheetah, but we'll we'll touch on it here a little bit. That is his ability to get conditioned to another level. Yes. He he was telling me, he gets into this interview, he's like, I said, what were you thinking when they called the Wasp in the Super Bowl? He's thinking, oh my gosh, I can now got to run the Wasp. We think of the Cheetah running 60-meter dashes at the indoor dash. You know, he's so fast, but he's really like a Kenyan distance runner running the steeplechase of the 10,000 meter run because he's got to run so many deep routes. So the shape he's got to be in, he's trying to go to another level to take himself in better shape than he's ever been in his life. And then if you add on the amount of shifts, motions, ghost reverses, he sometimes he runs 30 yards before we snap the ball. And then he's a decoy play on that play. And then he um, clears out a safety on a, on a 60 yard post pattern, and then he comes with a nine route, and now he's being targeted four plays later um, with a first down catch. There, there, if you was to put a, a, a GPS on his helmet and monitor how many miles distance-wise he runs a ball game just for those seven to eight catches, it would be, it would be amazing. It, I, I'm guaranteeing he leads the league in, in, in actual distance traveled per reception uh, when, you, when you talk about receivers in the league this year. That's a fabulous point. It's like we got to give him one of those Garmin watches <laughs> and explode. You have to change the batteries at halftime because there's so much going on back and forth and, and crossways. And you really see it at training camp when he's had to do that day after day after day after day. 
but he's trying to get himself in amazing shape. He has given an example, I think, to all of us, even young players, uh, including like your kids, to see, man, how do you work out in this virtual environment and to get ready uh, for the season? So let's jump into this. A chance to talk with the cheetah. And where does the cheetah go from here? Okay, we're taking it up a notch on defending the kingdom. So good to see this guy, Tyreek Hill, the cheetah. Fastest man in the NFL. It is so good to see you, my friend. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. How are you holding up? You doing okay in this stay-at-home protocol? Look, I'm doing all right, man. These quarantine workouts got me looking like Kimbo Slice out here right now. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a second because everybody <laughs> else is trying to emulate it, and now they're all jacked up. Okay. I'm going to tell you one thing. We, you and I really haven't had a chance to talk. We saw each other a little bit, but one of the coolest things about the Super Bowl – was being around your family some and seeing that celebration after the game, uh -huh. just that moment for you and your family and what it meant? Uh, I mean, I feel like if um, just going back to like my high school moments and just like dreaming of being an NFL player, you know, I always wanted moments like that of winning the Super Bowl and then just having your family there, you know, it was just so surreal. And it felt amazing, you know, to have my son, to have my little sister, to have my mom there and my grandparents. You know, so, I mean, that's definitely a bucket list dream of mine. So, complete it, baby. I want to be around your grandparents a lot. They are fun, man. They are awesome. All right, one quick question about the Wasp. I know you've been asked a thousand times. Uh -huh. But when you heard they're going, hey, we're going to run the Wasp, what was going through your mind in the huddle going, okay, good, let's do this? So, believe this or not, if, if, if you remember, we had called another play you know, right before that to me and I dropped it and it was like, um, I, I forgot to play, but anyways, like that play before that, um, I had dropped it and then coach had said, we, I need you wasps. Pat was like, we running wasps. I'm like, dude, man, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So I had to get my mind right, man. It was like a lot going on, 30 to 14. They like, we running fast because they be lying good. But man, I was just, man. I just took it back when I was in like Nebraska days with um, training with my uh, my uh, wide eye coach Doug. You know, he was like, "Look, big moments, man. Just pretend like you're running from a dog and just get out of the cut. Don't think about it. Just go." And it was just it just worked out. Everything just worked out. It was a great play, great play call, great throw by Pat, and it was amazing. We're gonna get to that in a second. And just your route running It's something you and I have talked about now the last several years, uh -huh. but. Um, Honestly, now you're, I know you enough where you're just like, hey, okay, we want it. That's good. I'm, I'm good. No, you want to do this again. You're so competitive. I say you're, you're James Harden when you play basketball. You got that left handed soft jumper. Uh, uh, but I know how competitive you are. Nobody can hang on with you in PS4. Mm -hmm. But you're getting ready in this virtual. What we've seen on social media is crazy. First of all, how strong is your core in these workouts that you're doing? <laughs> I mean, tell us about these. Uh, so basically, um, I got a, uh, me and um, one of my friends, we have a, a challenge going on. We got to do a thousand abs a day and that's Monday through Friday. You know, um, I, I mean, I feel like to be the strongest and, and to be able to um, have the endurance you got to have for Andy Reid's offense, you got to have a strong core, right? Because you run a WAPS, then you may come back two plays later and run another WAPS. So you run a 44 yards down the field, back to back, you know, so you got to have all that. And then, like, the hamstring curls, you got to tie all that in with it. So you got to have – definitely have strong legs to get in and out of the breaks, you know, um, a strong groin, strong glutes. You got to have strong everything, you know, because you don't want none of that getting tired, you know. So let's say you want to play 120 during training camp, you know, like, you're ready for those moments because those curls, those thousand abs you done done, like, they done got you ready for, for those moments. Like, you're not tired. Why Why everybody breathing like this? Your head's still up high, you know, breathing God's air, feeling good. That's awesome. And it's just like you want to get better every year, every year, every year. You and I have talked about this for the last several years, uh -huh. just how much you've worked at your route running. Now, we know you're the fastest guy in the league. We know you're crazy strong. We know you got hops. Uh, but the way you're spending so much time and running your routes to precision, what people, I tell people when they run the wasp, I go, watch him run this route in the wasp. Uh, what is it about how you've just taken this on as a source of pride and how you just want to keep getting better and better at it? Well, I just feel like um, 
if you want to be the best at something, you got to be able to um, be the best at like every aspect of that position, you know. Um, and my position is receiver, right? I mean, like you already said, it, I'm fast. I can jump. I mean, the next thing is is just route run. I mean, I can block too. So, I mean, I'm people always, you know, say, oh, he's he's only fast. You know, so I, I want people to just look at me and be like, okay, this guy got routes and he fast. You know, like we've never seen that before in, in, in NFL history. You know, so I want I just want to be different. And my mom always told me that, you know, if you want to be looked at a certain way, you just got to be different. Go out there and be different. You know, you, you can't go out there this year and, and just be a fast guy. You can't go out there the next year and just be be the same thing. You got to be different. You know, so each each year I'm working on my routes. Like I'm I'm trying to. I'm trying to I'm trying to add that Allen Iverson crossover in my release. I'm trying to add something. Devontae Adam. I'm, I'm I'm so I'm I'm going to so I, I just be doing that. You know, I go like I, I watch film of like every receiver in the game, you know, and I take something from them, you know, and I add it to my own craft box. They they don't even know it. Whether it's a Julio, whether it's a Mike, whether it's Devontae, Stefan, Antonio, it don't matter. Like I'm adding it to my craft box, you know. And you're honoring your mom now by the way you're playing. And it's just it's, to watch you year by year, just to see you now, um, you're just getting harder and harder to cover. But you bring up something I want to ask you about. Because uh-huh. on the play, the play with Damien and the touchdown to take the lead where he goes to the pylon, now all of a sudden you become, I've, I've seen us run that play. I knew it was in our playbook for the Super Bowl. But you're a decoy on that play. I mean, uh-huh. you're a big reason the way that play works because you watch the 49ers follow you, but now you're unselfish. So how about that, knowing, hey, this isn't necessarily my play, but I'm going to make this play work for Damien? I mean, just I mean, just being on this team, you know, just makes me happy, you know. I'm Like I said, I'm blessed to be a part of this team, so why not go all out for my brothers? Because I know they'll do the same, you know. Um, uh, let's see, if if we were running a, a deep route and Damien was in the backfield, I'm sure he'll – He'll make a hell of a block for Pat to get me the ball. So that's kind of the same thing, right? So I know my teammates will do the same thing for me. Go all out, 110%. Yeah, just one final question. I mean, how much do you want people to remember you as a football player? We know the fastest guy in the league. We, we know all that. But, huh? I mean, you're working on a Hall of Fame career here, dude. Mm-hmm. How much do you want people to go, Tyreek Hill was a football player? Uh, I want them to. I want them to say that a lot, man. I want. I want them to leave a legacy, you know. So when my kids grow up, like people will say, man, your dad was an was an amazing football player. Not only was he the fastest, but he was a he was an amazing route runner. He was a complete wide out, you know. So that legacy means a lot to me, man. Because when when I leave and go on, like it's my kids, man. So. Well, this is exciting. What do you tell the Chiefs kingdom now? We're all getting ready to run it back. We're all trying to stay at home and get out of this uh, and, and hit it, hit the ground running. What do you tell everybody right now? And hey, we'll see y'all in February in Tampa, man. Can't wait. <laughs> I'm calling it. Mitch, I'm calling it, man. I'm feeling it. So <laughs> I'm with you. I can't wait to call your call. But uh, it's great to see you, my friend. And uh, uh, just love you, brother, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, man. I miss you guys, too. All, all of you guys. So there we go. Guys, he's in a really good spot, Barbershop, I think, with where he is. And seeing him celebrate on that field, Super Bowl 54, with his family uh, was awesome. But now, all of a sudden, Tyreek is dust. He, he's wanting to be great. And now, all of a sudden, when you start to look at these numbers, now we've got to start talking about him as the best of the best, and even thinking about having a Hall of Fame career, and even talked about it, the, the legacy that he wants to leave. But all these, to me, are great signs of the cheetah going to whatever that next step is, and he's headed there, man. He wants to get there. Definitely. The difference between being a good receiver uh, and a great receiver, and then the, 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 the just the, the inch, the, the, the fragment of ability, the difference between being a great receiver and an elite receiver is something that I think he self he took as a self challenge this offseason. Um, coming up as a young man, I thought I was a wide receiver, so I looked at Jerry Rice. That was somebody who I uh, I admired. I tried to model myself. Every time I heard Jerry Rice talking about offseason workout, he talked about how he. Man, it was a it was a demand he put on himself to be the best conditioned, not one of the best, the best conditioned wide receiver in the league every single year. And I think that played into him being the best receiver 
of all time when you talk about who is the GOAT of the wide receivers is because he was able to run his route so consistently all season long first quarter to fourth quarter, game one, game 16, throughout the Super Bowl. And then when it came to the offseason, he, he 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 demanded himself to get back in that same condition year after year in, in, that, in that storybook um, career of his, uh, leading the uh, NFL in all-time receiving yards and receptions as a wide receiver. Shop, these offseason workouts that Tyreek has put on social media, <laughs> I mean, I'm tired even just talking about it. I get, I've had videos of little kids trying to do it, families yeah. trying to do it, dads and moms. Uh, it's, it's, it's been phenomenal. First of all, I don't know how strong that dude's core is, but it's got to be one of the strongest on the planet. Uh, and these workouts, man, he has taken himself, challenging himself uh, to go to, an, to another level. So he's not satisfied with just being this or that or the fastest or whatever. These workouts now are not only an inspiration to – civilians in the chief's kingdom but also his teammates we even saw mccall try to do that hamstring lift thing and he did okay but tyreek's on another planet yeah his, his body is put together like someone you've never seen before um you know coming out the draft a lot of people thought he was kind of built more like a running back because he's so compact pound for pound definitely one of the toughest fastest most durable receivers and even though you know th th there were some quarters missed um with the guys finally tuned and as fine an athlete as him, um, it, it's the way he can recover. Even even um, at 80%, he's faster than most of the receivers out there. And when you have a guy with that much speed and is able to perform, even at, you know, sometimes not at 100%, uh, but able to go out there and still give you that same impact. Defensively, you still have to respect his speed even when he doesn't show you it. He doesn't showcase it on a certain play. It, it, it demands a safety to still cheat his side. No one is going solo man coverage. No defensive back in our league wants to go one-on-one, -on -one, jam, uh, rerouting at the ball, and then expect to keep vertical with, with, uh, with, with Tyreek Hill. And then you put in, what is the defense going to do to try to manipulate or try to stop the uh, Tyreek Hill, Patrick Holmes saga? Well, you think about it defensively. Well, we got to come after Pat. We got to speed up Pat's clock. We can't let him be back there like it's 7 7 and just deliver it um, on time to Tariq. Well, then you're thinking about Tyreek Hill. If they're going to pressure Pat, somebody has to be soloed up. Somebody, you know, they can't just double me the entire game with the other receivers we have on this team. So when that time is called and you have a, a quarterback with the talent level of Pat Mahomes, you know it's only a matter of time where he's going to find you. And this receiving core, they do a great job. When it's time to score, it doesn't matter who scores. They all celebrate together. And that mentality, I think, is something that keeps anybody from being selfish or, or worrying about how many targets they get. They see themselves as a unit being able to perform at a very high level when compared to other units in the league. And there is a creeping problem on other teams or can be in this league when people start to worry about I got to have this many targets. I got to have this many looks. Hey, feed me the ball. That's when things can go off the track real easily. That leads to the next part of Tyreek Hill where I'm really proud of him. One, trying to get to the next level. But two, his ability to be patient. Great receivers in this league have to be patient, not get frustrated. Let me just give you an example. All right, we know in the postseason, I mentioned at the outset of the uh, at this uh, podcast, 27 targets in the postseason, 17 catches. 16 targets in Super Bowl 54. He also had a game where he had 19 targets at Tennessee. The Chiefs lost that game, 35-32. I think of a game like at New England when I went back and looked at it. Eight targets, six catches, highly productive. And with Tyreek, he has the ability to be patient, patient within the scheme. He even mentioned he takes pride in his blocking. You mentioned earlier before the interview with him, and he even mentioned in the interview, being a decoy. There's times he's a decoy. He was a decoy on Damian Williams' touchdown at the pylon when the Chiefs took the lead in, in Super Bowl 54. So he's patient with all that. The other thing is one of the countermeasures teams have been trying to rough him up at the line of scrimmage, throw off the timing, right? Jalen Ramsey tried to break his collarbone on the sideline at Jacksonville. And yet this dude has the is growing mentally and emotionally enough to stay patient and not get frustrated. And to me, that's another level of the cheetah's development. Yeah, it shows maturity level. A guy, 
he has the ultimate amount of trust in Andy Reid and in Coach the Enemy. The, the, they understand that the play works if everybody shows maximum effort. Everybody has to believe that they have a chance of getting the ball to make a defense guard all aspects of the field. And when you when you spread a defense that thin, it allows those plays like we saw in Jacksonville where Sammy Watkins catches a slant, splits the defense, and goes 80 yards for a touchdown. If you have certain threats spread around the field defensively, you can't overreact to anything. And then once the guy, no matter if it's Cheetah, no matter if it's Sammy, uh, t- um, um, Kelsey, it doesn't matter who catches the ball, it still leaves that defense so vulnerable for yards after the catch. And that's that commitment guys have to, hey, if you're running a decoy, a shallow route, if you're running, running a clear out route, you have to do it knowing that in certain defenses, it your, your decoy becomes – primary route number one if the defense doesn't play it and react the way that we expect them to play it. And so, man, you got five eligible receivers all running like the ground's on fire. It's a you-know-what against a defense trying to play 50 yards deep and then trying to come tackle um, whoever the running back is or whoever the tight end is after a short uh, completion and keep him from from getting a first down. 1950-plus plays in the regular season. 50 plus, not 40. The Wasp was 44 and it was in the postseason, but still 50 plus plays, 1950 plus plays. That's what we can see and go just shake our head like, wow, that's unreal. But it's also what we don't see his blocking, his patience, his ability to uh, be precise. And that's why now we got to start talking about the cheetah, as you mentioned at the very outset of this podcast, not as a gadget guy. Yeah, he can still return punts and kicks. But now all of a sudden, we got to start talking about him as one of the premier receivers in the National Football League. Not just now, it becomes comparative to some of the greatest to ever play. Definitely, and it's always that what's next. So um, you challenge yourself as a as a as a as a, as a professional um, to not let those pats on the backs, not, not let the 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 Madden rating of ninety nine or wherever it is, your your speed rating affect how you're going to approach the off season. Um, he understands this, you know. We named this podcast Defending the Kingdom before the Chiefs actually won a championship. And, and so we saw the greatness. We, we knew what we had here in Kansas City way before everybody else. But that doesn't, that doesn't change anything. We still prepare um, um, to have a, 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 a number one podcast each and every week. Not, not because now that the Chiefs are the champion, but because the, 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 the quality that me and you um, expect and demand of each other when it comes to being a professional uh, communicator, uh, teacher. Uh, we want our fan base to be the number one fan base as far as understanding what professional football really is all about. Absolutely. And what professional football is all about is a guy like Tyree Kill trying to be uh, the best in every way, shape, or form. It's just, it's exciting to see it. And, uh, you know, he's, he's working to stay healthy this year. Uh, it's hey, he, he can go off the chain this year and off the chart with those plays. And I'm just glad he's on our side shop, man. I mean, having to play like a player, like we say, with like, with like, like cheater, man, it's almost when you have Andy Reed and coach B enemy, they're playing a game like battleship. Um, the first <laughs> 10 or so plays, they're just, they're, they're, they're throwing plays left and right. Just want to see how the defense react. You know, we, we missed there. We missed there. Oh, uh, we hit there. But we don't need to go back there right now. We we we're gonna we're gonna mark that down as a hit because we know you got a ship over there and we're gonna sink that battleship when we, when we need to. But we're gonna keep on throwing some other things. And they're like blood. Once they smell blood in that water, they're like bloodhounds. And your your defensive game plan is over. Your day is over once they hit on a few of those shots. Absolutely. Enjoyed this. I'm gonna enjoy watching uh, the cheetah go to another level. And again, a shout out to you, brother. Hey, yes, sir. Taking care, my, taking care of the man here. But prayers up again for your family, for the whole kingdom. Again, we just continue to, to uh, persevere and try to march on through this COVID protocol. And again, to all the first responders, people on the front line in the healthcare industry. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the folks at hy V and those, I mean, every day to try to help to provide it so we can get through this. But uh, I know we got to keep rolling with this, buddy. We'll keep going, shop. No doubt, man. God bless everybody. Stay safe. Uh, stay humble and continue to serve your community in any way possible. Um, protect your family. And um, yes, definitely. Um, let's, let's continue to defend the kingdom. He's Sean Barber. I'm Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs. We'll all watch the cheetah go to another level. Thanks for joining us on this edition 
of defending the kingdom. Thanks for listening to the Chiefs Official Podcast Network. Ten five touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at our